special guest who has enjoyed a fruitful career in TV, on the silver screen, and Broadway. Working alongside some of the biggest names in Hollywood like Denzel Washington, Regina King, and Danny DeVito, to name a few. And in this theater, <laughs> Gary Marshall's role. Let me, let me just stop, man. This guy is amazing. But before we get into him and all the accolades and the wonderful things he's done, I'd like to tell everybody, give it up for my brother from another mother, my co-host, Big Tiz. Everybody give it up for him. Yeah. Yeah. What's going on, everyone? Hey, guys, thanks for stopping by the Songwriting Loft. We got an epic show for you guys tonight, especially a lot of you guys out there who might not know this individual, you know, outside of the circles, because we're streaming from all these different platforms, Facebook, YouTube, Twitch, you know what, Twitter. We hitting it all from all different angles. But you know what, guys? This guy who we have on, he deserves a presentation and he deserves a massive one. And right now what we're going to do is we want to give him an intro, Ken, cue it up and give him what he deserves. This is what I'm talking about, getting your flowers. So watch while we show you who we got on tonight. Yes. We're going to cue it up. Where... You guys see it? Nope, not yet. Oh, we having a little bit of uh, things going on right now, but uh, we're going to keep you guys entertained because what we got... Well, let's do this this way, all right? Since, since they want to act like that, how about this? There we go. There we go. Many talented about. individuals. One that comes to mind is on tonight's show, Gary DeWitt Marshall, as we welcome him to the songwriting law. Let's check out some of his endeavors in his illustrious career. Yeah. How much time have we got? 55 minutes. Did somebody call the cops? Yeah, they're on the way. Don't call yeah, no sure cops. They're rushing right over no right cops, now. man. Biggest batter, 110 over 75. No cops. These guys could have killed yeah, I got problems, yo. I got problems. Cops only gonna make it worse, yo. I feel you, bro. Trust me, I feel you. Just do me something. Gary's also starred in shows such as New York Undercover and The Hurricane with Denzel Washington, just to name a few. Look here, man. I don't want no trouble. This here is a small town. I'm, uh... I'm not trying to make trouble for you, Mr. Gardner. I'm going to tell you this one time, then I'm never going to tell you again. And if you tell anyone, I'm going to say you was lying. He does make a good role model. After all, reading books isn't good. <laughs> reading books is what? Yeah. <laughs> Choose your role models wisely, little brother. Captain Tom Murdoch. Look, here's what you do. You go right here. Take another ride at the PX. Go half a click till you see the DPTM set. Then take a left. Yes. If you hit the RSPC, you're going too far. A bag, man. I wasn't in your bag. You calling me a liar, black man? Don't call me no motherfucking liar, all right? Fuck it out of here, man. Look, I'm looking for my shit, and it was up in here. Just, just trials, man. Get out of here. Okay. Huntsville. Got an uncle living in Huntsville. It's a simple transaction. Starring in TV shows My dad's going to loan me nearly 70% of the purchase price. PASNL is picking up the rest. Uh, have a seat. Thank you. So, what do you think? You can have two of your two Gary also sprouted out into commercial field. Two for two dollars. Jocelyn? Juliet? You know it's Tyler. What you want is what you get. Get your choice of guaranteed minus bumper at your choice of prices. No matter what kind of car or budget you have, you're in control. Emergency coverage. Great choice of doctors. And great service, too. So you can get back to business, and uh, that's good for business. Every year, one million families face losing their homes to foreclosure. If you're ignoring your mortgage issues, things will only get worse. Call 1-888-9. But don't get upset. And why not? Well, she just wanted your first Mother's Day present to be special. When you 
get the woman who's given you the greatest gift ever. Diamond earrings from K Jewelers would make a great start. Graduating from Edison Tech in Rochester, New York. Not only was Gary in a theater major, Gary was also multi-talented. And one of the things that make us say, this is one of the hidden gems from out of Rochester, New York. Gary DeWitt Marshall, one of the groundbreakers who are breaking fields in all kinds of acting, theater, and different things that are out there on the horizon. Guys, give a great standing ovation as we welcome Rochester's own Gary DeWitt Marshall to the songwriting loft. That's what it's yeah, all about. Man. Gary DeWitt Marshall on the songwriting loft tonight. Gary, with the reason we had to play the intro, guys out there listening, it had to be long. It had to be. I wanted it to hit home the things that Gary has done. And a lot of you guys who are out there uh, at, from Edison Tech here in Rochester, New York, and from other outlets doesn't realize the work that this man put in. So tonight we're giving him his flowers. Gary. Thanks again for stopping by the Songwriting Loft, brother. How's everything going? Everything's good. You know, um, uh, thank you. It's good to see you in Kenton after so many years. Yeah, brother. It's, it's Like I said, it's epic to have you on tonight. And the fact is, like a lot of people don't realize, you know, uh, younger, younger guys coming up through uh, Edison Tech and everything, they don't realize because you you know you've been out of the scene for a while but things about you they don't know gary is the hard work you put in and one of the things we want to get out there gary give the guys a little bit about you know guys who don't know you who gary dewitt marshall is um well gary dewitt marshall is a, a father uh a brother a son uh, a husband um, and uh, probably the the hardest working uh, cat you'll ever encounter um, regard the vocation or uh, task um, I'm a hard worker hey that's what it's all about a lot of you guys out there you know we touch base with Gary offline and the thing about it is when you hear the stories that we're going to come to tonight and you hear some of the things that Gary, the hard work that goes into it, a lot of you up and coming people, a lot of you up and coming guys, ladies, you don't realize the work that was put in. But one of the things, Gary, I want, I want to start is the fact of how did you get it in a sense of saying, you know what, I'm interested in theater because you know what, I went, I went to high school with Gary's. I don't know if a lot of you guys know that, but we went to high school together and Gary was that guy that, I always knew that there was something about you, brother, because the fact is he was that guy that always made us laugh. He was I was that guy that always had that that thing going. And you can tell that it was something. But what made you what was that thing that made you say, you know what, I'm ready to get into theater? Well, I think it was a couple of things. Um, number one, the training ground for me was the uh, the tech follies um, and you know, I wasn't particularly talented in, in terms of singing or dancing, but I, I played the drums. And uh, so I found myself uh, in the pit band uh, and able to contribute, but really to have a bird's eye view of how uh, production, a professional production is is uh, put together. So even though I, I, I wasn't necessarily uh, thinking about theater in that way, I was learning uh, aspects of, you know, um, on the stage performance and behind the scenes, the rehearsal process, all of the things that, um, you know, came to be an advantage when I got in it for real. Yeah, that's what it's all about. The fact is we all, we all have that thing that turns us a certain direction. And like you said, this, that thing turned you into that direction to where you went with it, brother. And I always looked at the way how you were in there, like with the, with the tech follies. I would look at the guys that were in there, and I'm like, okay, you know, acting is acting. And that wasn't my thing or my forte, but you went from that level, and then you took it a little higher. I mean, because after high school, I mean, what came about? Did you get, get it in your sense of mind to saying, you know what, there's college, and also if it's not college, 
you know, what am I going to do with my life? Or is this acting thing going to be the real? Um, I, I didn't pursue acting as, you know, I did a play. I think I did two plays in college, uh, but I was a sociology major. And, you know, so what, what got me into um, acting was uh, when I was in, after college, I was in graduate school at um, University of Albany, SUNY Albany, and um, one of the professors said I had a good voice and asked me to audition, uh, and I, I auditioned, um, and I got I got an internship that was paying me, you know, more than I, like I, I I could make money at this. So um, then I just figured out a way. Uh, you know, I got invited to a, this elite um, uh, training for uh, classical actors, Shakespeare and Company. And they invited me there, gave me a scholarship. And so I, I was, it's like um, a total immersion in, in, in a different language. All they spoke was Shakespeare, you know, and, right. and I was first in it, you know, I, I wasn't prepared for, for that, but you know, what I learned at, at, at um, Hobart, and I was going to tell this story, you know, um, I discovered that I was a, a, a good writer, right? I was in a remedial writing class, um, but when I found out that, that, that's what the, the instructor uh, liked my work and, and encouraged me to write more. But before that, I got called into the, um, the dean's office they was going to expel me for plagiarism, right? What? So, yeah, <laughs> my first semester at Hobart, I, I'm I'm in I'm in the, the dean's office with with the deans and and um, the the head guy, the ombuds person or whatever it is, says, uh, uh, "Young man, do do you uh, you know do you know uh, uh, you know do you know about plagiarism?" And I said I said yeah I said uh, he uh, he's um, one of them uh, Greek or Roman uh, philosophers like uh, Aristotle. <laughs> <laughs> oh boy! Hey, they they said I guess they just they huddled up and they decided look we got to keep this kid around for comic relief at least you know so <laughs> I didn't realize that that like you know I was just ignorant you know so I pleaded the fifth and I can't you know I wasn't ready for college you know. So. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. oh man um but you know so I, I i realized that i had a gift i realized that there was something besides my tenacity and my talent that's that 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 set me apart from 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 other people you know and then i i, I was i was as any young person you know I, I was i was not protective of that gift i was um reckless with that gift but right. once once i realized uh that that gift w was something to, to 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 hold sacred i in you know in my older life began to protect that and really let that be the 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 fulcrum to everything that i do you know so um i i realized you know that that there was something something different you know that that i uh, at Hobart, I learned how to learn, right? I, I didn't have, I, I, I could teach myself and I'm a competitive person. So when I got to um, auditions and whatnot, I, you know, I, I would figure it out. I'd figure it out fast. And and, and I, I was, I had a talent or a skill for it. And, and, and it kind of just, you know, um, you know, developed from there, you know? So it wasn't right. like, a master plan. I was just, I'm really uh, agile in my mind, you know, and so I kind of figured it, figured out things and figured out a path for myself. Um, and it, you know, it worked out, you know, 20 something years later, I'm still doing it. Hey, awesome. that's what it's all about, brother. And like, like you said, and I tell my wife a lot of times, I said, you know what, 
some of some things some of the greatest things that have happened because of mistakes you know like like you said <laughs> with the fact of you going out there and they're, they're talking about plagiarism and this and that or whatever but but ken you know let me ask you as well now you've known uh gary since he's a young man and you you can see that tenacity that this guy had uh you know with us dealing with gary and and you know yeah. in different different phases of life you can see you can see it you can see that this guy has something you know what i mean you yeah. you can see it I, I, it's I hard to describe either, though I, I actually thought he was either going to be a comedian or or a running back those two things <laughs> I, I, I had the opportunity to play football with this guy when he was a young when we were just kids and his speed man that his speed level was just <laughs> gone. he was ghost he was ghost so yo i was like Tyree hill right yeah, yeah Tyree. better than Tyree Kill, man. <laughs> I'd venture to say with a resounding yeah, a resounding yeah, yeah. hell yeah. <laughs> and and this is this is the thing. Even with my own kids, right? You know, it, it it's hard to to because you know well I, I'm I'm five seven five eight one hundred seventy pounds or whatever. Don't nobody believe I could dunk a basketball in eighth grade or 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 you know ran or or, or, or you know with, with, even with my son you know, or my sons, they can't even fathom the 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 amount of, of, of athleticism with the guys that we played against. Not not only the guys that I, I competed against and, and prevailed, but that that level of, of athleticism don't seem yeah. to exist no, now. Yeah, you know it doesn't. And, yeah, it and doesn't the thing is I scored a touchdown at every level that I played, from Pop Warner to college. And oh, man. you know <laughs> And Kenny, to 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 you know, pat myself on on the back. Hobart, when I went, they were a lacrosse um, dynasty, and I, I decided to go out what? for football. Um, and you know, I, I wasn't I wasn't the biggest or the fastest. You know, this is this is you know, everybody was was uh, equal to you know, at the at the college level, whatever. Right. So I wasn't nothing special, you know. Um, but I'm sitting at my locker, and the coach, Coach Urich from the lacrosse team, came to my. He had to read my. He Marshall, I'm like yes. He said, uh, uh, you, you, you know, do you you ever play lacrosse? I'm like, no, sir. He said, well, go to the trainer. Um, you know, get some equipment. I, I, I'd like you to try out. Wow. Bro, <laughs> Are you serious? I made Hobart College. I ain't never played. <laughs> Gotta give some love for that, man. Give him some love. Give him some love. Yeah. <laughs> I didn't even know how to cradle the ball. All I knew is that once I got that ball, could nobody catch me. Yeah. <laughs> I, I, <laughs> that's, that's what I remember. Eating dust. <laughs> <laughs> oh man. Yeah, and that's what I mean. I got like I said when we said like in the show, multi-talented. This guy had it all, and a lot of you guys who don't, you know, don't know that side of Gary, he was, he was, he was, he was a, he was an athletic guy, guy that was talented. Like I said, you know what, make you laugh in a minute, have us all busting out. It wouldn't stop, just keep it going. But the fact is, he kept on from there. Now you, now you, you attended Hobart College. Now after Hobart, what was your initial track to where you know what you said? You know what, I'm, I'm, I'm done with the college. You're done with the college thing. And so what was the next move for Gary going on from there? Bruh, I'm gonna tell you, I, I, I tried everything else other than, you know, what I was meant to do. You know, I I, I, I went to work for the, oh, first of all, I, I went, as I said, I was a writer and I got a, a fellowship to um, University of Santa Cruz uh, to um, a, a fast track PhD program at Santa Cruz uh, for sociology, urban sociology. Like I, I, right. I was like, I, 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 you know, I probably was inebriated when I wrote the thing. I don't even remember what it was. <laughs> <laughs> they loved it. <laughs> oh boy. I went and flaunted it back in, in the Dean's face. I'm like, yeah, I'm like, yeah, here's another, you know, Garistotle. No, how about that? <laughs> <laughs> Oh boy! So, then I, I went. I went there, and um, 
to California. It was the first time I was on an airplane. I went out there. And, bro, it was just too far away. I didn't think I'd be homesick. I thought I could go to the moon to school. But it was it was, it was, it was a little far. So I came back. I, I took a deferment. I came back. And I, I took a job, um, you know, regular job, like at the Urban League or, or something like that. And I did, you know, years of, of unfulfilling stuff until while I was there at, at Albany working, that that professor encouraged me to um audition and audition and once i went to that that shakespeare camp and it blew my mind and i felt i was fluent in shakespeare and could nothing stop me <laughs> <laughs> that was what's up. yeah man i was dusting and throwing and bowing and, and you know <laughs> I got into my car. I was going to LA with that. I was going to LA with all that strumpet stuff. Boy, I was about to take my Shakespeare on the road, you know. And I stopped in um, uh, Chicago. I had a friend at Northwestern. And I stopped in Chicago, going to you know hang out for a couple of days. And I handed out my my headshot at these um, agencies. And by the time I got back to Evanston, man, the 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 light on the recorder was blinking and i had you know uh like i think i mentioned to you i, I booked uh um unsolved mysteries which gave wow. me enough money to uh get an apartment uh join the union and really uh you know gave me a reason to stay um and i guess i, I that that's that's when i started my professional career yeah. that's um, awesome. Right. <laughs> took yeah. a chance on yourself. Chicago. Huh? Took a chance on yourself and it paid off. Oh, yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. All, always. I, Gary, I got a, a moment just to break it up a little bit. I, I just want to thank all the viewers for uh, chiming in. You got some uh, congratulations out there, Gary, from some of your students. <laughs> you know? So much <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Like uh, 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 what is Nyla Smith, uh, Lena, Lena Pay? I, I hope I pronounced that right. If I didn't, I do apologize. Glad to see our professor on your podcast. Um, go, Professor Marshall. Let's do it. <laughs> and what's strange about this is these these are students that I haven't even met. These are all wow. students. Of <laughs> okay. But get their names, cause uh, I I got a uh, 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 they get an A. They get an A. <laughs> <laughs> oh boy, oh boy, uh, no, that's funny. Hey, yeah, uh, but, Gary, one more thing, big dude. Yeah. Let's 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 give them a little trivia, the people out there. Let's uh, do it, Renee, man. All of you guys out there in Facebook land, thank you so much for tuning in. Now we're gonna make it worth your while because in this spot right here, it's a five dollar. Starbucks gift card for you if you can answer this, all right? So we're going to go and do something five like this. What'd you say, Gary? I said, y'all got five on it? Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> iPad just, uh... Oh, yeah. So we're going to... You want to go Question ahead and read it, Gary? One. Or... I, I could do it for him. Okay. Which play that Gary starred in was nominated for a Tony Award? A, Four Men on a Couch? B, song for Jacob Zulu, C, Renaissance Man, or D, twelve dollars. Come on, so guys. anybody out there, first person to answer that, board. we'll pay for your morning cup of joe. All right. <laughs> uh, somebody said C. Guess what? <laughs> Guess what? Wrong answer. <laughs> somebody said A. <laughs> Wrong answer. Oh. <laughs> Another C. Wrong answer. <laughs> Keep it rolling, baby. Keep it rolling. But until we get the right answer, uh, they still saying C. I'm, I'm just, I'm baffled. They saw that clip of you, Gary, with Danny DeVito, man. They keep saying Renaissance, man. <laughs> <laughs> 
Oh boy, that is why that is. So we, D we have a winner. D we have a winner. Yes, I'd like to give it up to Lou Uster Sims for coming in with the right answer. Thank you so much for joining us tonight, and thank you. We'll be sending that out to you. Stay tuned for more trivia, but we're getting back to Gary and the yeah. show. Yes. Did, did we, uh, are we? Hey, now you're back on me, but you're good, though. Okay. <laughs> all right. Uh, all right, Gary. So, so Gary. Is he what, back? One Gary? Thing... What Can happened to uh, Can you hear me? Yeah, yeah, there he goes. There okay, you go. there you go. A couple things is happening. Uh, I wasn't prepared because uh, I'm using my phone and it's running out of juice. So I, I got to uh, switch up to the computer to see if that's going to work. But All right, I, I'll answer. Okay. Yep. Um, it's the song of Jacob Zulu. The song um, of yes. Jacob Zulu. Yes. And yes. I, I, I wasn't, I, I was in the ensemble. I played uh, six different roles. Uh, oh. I had to uh, Zulu and um, a couple different um, uh, dialects that you know involve the clicking. Um, yeah, it's Tosa, the X. <laughs> so um, that yeah that 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 was the show that took me uh from chicago to uh a world tour to broadway um and wow. you know uh that that was that was cool because that got me uh in in the new york market um and i didn't have to you know go in and, and be a waiter or something like that i i went in with a a, a legit Broadway gig, yeah, and that's that's the clout. That's yeah. the way to, to roll up into New York. <laughs> <laughs> like so wait, now, Jordan. Now I'm looking at these. Now, now you had you rolled up in there with that, but then you know when when we seen you, like uh, I believe when I first seen you early on, it, it was all it was the commercials, like we seen in the clips, like the the McDonald's commercials. Yeah, you know, I mean, I mean, bro, I mean, you went off, you went on like a tangent, like a fire, bro. McDonald's, uh, well, Midas, it, uh, you name it. That that that's the other thing. I, in that week, I booked that McDonald's commercial, the National McDonald's commercial, and that Unsolved Mysteries. That's why I was able to, to afford to stay um, in Chicago. But here's here's the thing. Two things about that. The um, Burrell. Um, advertising agency is, is the, one of the top black advertising agencies that that was uh, their project and uh boomerang was was fashioned after the burrell uh agency the the oh, wow. uh, great movie boomerang so it's right. this oh. black agency, right and so remember during um this time this there wasn't very many black straight up black commercials this ran for during uh like a different world or 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 or, or what you know it, it was it was straight for that market so it was a really successful campaign but the thing about it is the the original line was um jocelyn juliet you you know each other you better make that three right and <laughs> you know you know you know Y'all know my reputation, man. You know, so I, I had to bring some. Some I'm like, well, he, he would never say that, right? <laughs> so, right. Then, you know, so on the improv, I, 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 one of the takes, I said, you know, you better make that to go, you know. And they, they, <laughs> laughed, they laughed, like, okay, yeah, we'll, we'll keep that, right? Yeah, okay. So, um, oh, are you serious? You, you, yeah, you improv so, that in a commercial? You started your. He started his thought, directing chops right there, man. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you know, but you know, like and, and like you said. So what 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 preceded that? That was that was probably. I think I told you, you know, when I was in Albany, I saw a play, uh, Fences, with um, John Amos and Isaiah Washington, and I was sitting there, and I'm like, I can do that. I can do that. 
And I said, I told you, you know, that the ushers had to shut me up because I, I, I was saying it out loud. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, 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 yeah. About six months later, that was the third thing I, I, I got when I went that week that I was in Chicago. I, I, I booked um, Fences, I booked the Unsolved Mysteries, and I booked that um, McDonald's commercial. And I figured it was going to be like that. This was easy. This was a cakewalk, right? right. So <laughs> even when New York, it, it was it was it was it was similar, man. You know, I had because I'm I was good at it. I was I was real good at it. So it wasn't that, you know. Listen, I'm I'm a ju I'm just this schmuck off the street, and <laughs> here, here I am. You know, I'm excelling at, at this. Um, and then when I got out to L.A., similar thing, but totally the culture is different, right? right but I had a right. little bit more success. Than, than my my friends that came from stage to the small screen, because uh, I just figured I, I sort of had it figured out, but that brought me into teaching because I was I was schooling them and coaching them on on you know the nuances of of the small screen versus the big screen, and I realized you know now what took me out to L. A. was I was offered a job as a teacher at a um, performing arts high school. Oh my. my my uh current wife's mother um okay. offered me the job and it's uh solely because of 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 her offering me that job at a performing arts high school in california that i'm sitting here as a professor um <laughs> of theater studies at the uh college of charleston today wow yeah man Hey, hey, Give him the love. like I said, brother, you, you, you're an amazing guy, brother. You, I mean, like you said, you've done a lot of things and, and even within the, the acting realm of it, you know, sometimes you, you have to, things go a certain way in life for all of us to where, you know, things are going well for a certain direction. And sometimes you find yourself, like we talked about, where you have to come back home. You know what I mean? You came home, you came back home for a little bit. I mean, you chopped it up for a little bit. And I said, you know what? I said, this guy is a phenomenal talent. And we talked, we talked offline as well. He's, you know, it was, it was about that time for you to sprout your wings further and just move from within the Rochester, New York area. Well, you know what, Rochester, when I came back to Rochester, right, a lot of people asked me, man, why, why you leave Hollywood? You know, <laughs> right? <laughs> like, have you been to Hollywood, man? You know, like, you know, th there wasn't anything that, that was, there substantially to, to keep me. I had I wasn't working at the level that that I, I knew I could. I had too many distractions. Gas was high. You know I wasn't. Right. I, I wasn't doing. You know I, I wasn't focused like I like I needed to be. So um, I, I read up on my education because what what I, I've always had was my advantage was I I, I sort of looked at this from a cerebral standpoint you know i, I really always had had a, a a heady way of looking at acting and from college i, I was a writer you know so I, I i was able to fuse those those things and over the years um really honing my um artistic philosophy what made me right. different from from other people in, in terms of my teaching technique my pedagogy um my influences so all of that was 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 is unique and it wasn't until you know so I, rochester gave me a t uh, an opportunity to just kind of uh float under the radar with no expectations um and you know really like when i i i i, I spoke to my agent about you know leaving i'm like well yeah i'm gonna I'm take i'm gonna uh take some time off. They thought I was going to Palm Springs. <laughs> <laughs> oh, boy. They thought I was going on a respite. <laughs> <laughs> oh. No, no, no. This, this is a paradigm shift. You know, this is a, a hard pivot. You know, this is a, this is a, 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 a juke fake, you know? Right. Like, you know, and 
so I think what if 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 I if I'm gonna give myself props, it's it's like I say it's similar to someone like Michael Jordan uh, going from basketball to baseball or Deion Sanders or anybody that, that it, it ain't it the country club that I'm in now, the country club of academia is a hard nut to crack, bro. It's a hard, hard mm. nut to crack. They don't, they don't want a whole lot of people up in here. It's not right. very welcome, right? But it, it wasn't. It, it it wasn't. You know, there are barriers to access um, professionally as well in Rochester that I, I experienced. There ain't nobody sitting there from 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 city hall to to uh, the sanitation that got my credentials or or my experience. You know, so I, I need to either be the mayor or the governor. So that there, there, there <laughs> right? is no, no reason why I should sit there underemployed uh, right. in Rochester. Right. So um, when 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 it occurred to me uh, was uh, th this past summer, I, I, I after and I mentioned the, the reckoning of, of 2020 showed me a, a, a lot uh, and I, I give always I give props to the sacrifice of George Floyd for me being able to be in the position that I'm in um, now, right? Um, because I, I took advantage of the, the, the small sliver of access that was, you know, about two weeks long, you know? But in, in, in that summer, I, I people opened their doors because they had to, right? And I was interviewing for a job that I was well qualified for that was paying two hundred thirty thousand dollars a year, right? And that may not sound like a lot of money to some people. It may sound like a lot of money to some people. Right. Um, it, it 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 was a a a, a wage that that I, I would have gladly uh, accepted for stuff that I had experience doing, that I had skill in, and that I had been doing for far less in Rochester. Right. So what what it it pointed out to me is. Well, this is my worth on the market, at least starting, and I could never get that here, right? Yeah. So that's what that's that's what told me, you know, um, this this is what's out there for a guy of my talent, my ilk, and I don't need to drive Uber, um, and 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 be a lunch lady. Uh, uh, <laughs> <laughs> you said a lunch lady. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Don't 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 get me started. Don't get me started, man, on, on that. <laughs> oh. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah wait, hey, hey, we we better refocus them. <laughs> one of the oh, things boy. I, one of the things that I've never left is is comedy, right? Um, I'm still obviously a funny dude, and uh, so. When, but what I what I, I I don't really like performing as as a comic. Like as you notice lately, it's dangerous being a stand up comic. Oh, oh right? my god! You know? oh. Right? And but what what as a ghost writer, I was able to uh, um, live this sort of alter ego, right? So I would go to what they call workout rooms under uh, assumed names. I would use Coltrane. I'll use a Blebo, um, Park Patterson, um, uh, Poe Jim Watkins. I, I, I had different, I would never be me, right? And right. it gave me like a freedom to really say anything. Now I might have another comedian in mind, like, yo, this would be a good, you know, good joke. Let me, you know, so I, I would go to these workout rooms or these places in the East Village for performance artists. Um, and you know, I, I I took Mike Epps to, to um, one of these spots, right? And oh, it's, it's, wow. it's really mind blowing. Like what, what I won't even tell the story. We, we'll have to save that for another day. But this, this is like really underground performance art beyond comedy. This is, this is th these are like either geniuses at work or somebody that's 5150 and need to be, um, <laughs> <laughs> right? Oh man, I love it all, right? So, I was for for my years in in New York, I I wasn't interested in 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 
you know, if you notice, I was never on Deaf Comedy Jam. I sat that out, right? Wow. But I, I was I, I was prolifically writing, and when I was using my talent, I I I, I would I would put together uh, my one man show, right? So I was doing long form comedy and 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 and, and something that really didn't fit in a stand up format. That wasn't that wasn't my forte. I could write that, but that wasn't where my passion was, right? So I continue yeah. to, to continue to write, write for um, other comedians who uh, are, are telling my jokes real funny, you know, better than right. better than, uh, and and that's cool, you know. Um, I don't. I. It's like I'm not the jokes I write. They come to me like right, like they come to me. So I, I'm. They're like. I'm not uh, attached to them, right? I don't. I don't get attached to the, the work that I that I do. How how else could I, you know, put it on the open market? You know, yeah, like right. I I I've been uh, my company uh, is a, a script or content acquisition company, and I've I've acquired uh, content um, over the past you know ten or twelve years. That, that I mentioned to you is that's my retirement. Um, these these and i had the foresight to do this you know 20 years ago they're just you know now everybody's catching up to to where i already was <laughs> yeah hey garrett let me ask you something too because uh Yo. like he said we've had interaction on the board we're also streaming them from different places and things like that some of the stuff that we did have on there uh let me read i'm gonna read two of them one of them was like uh you spoke earlier about uh you know someone said uh, i want to know what is he, what do you mean by not protecting? And I and I think when you were talking about that, you were talking about not protecting the craft at at an early age on in your in your you know in your cycle of being getting into acting or theory. I, I think that yeah, I, I think in, in terms of, of of protecting my gift, right? And 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 what what that means is um, really it's it's a lifestyle change. Right. right. It's, it's doing things uh, differently. Mo ma mainly it's um, uh, extracting toxic people uh, and situations out of your life. Amen. Now, um, I, I, I worked for a, a brief while on um, a series uh, with, uh, damn, I'm trying to remember. <laughs> I'll remember in a minute, but he was he was bullethead on Steve Harvey show. The, the, uh, uh, yeah, I know who you're talking uh, about too. Yeah, I know who you're talking about. Right, and um, so we worked on we worked on this uh, uh, TV show called Matt Waters. Um, that was Montel Williams's um, uh, TV show back in the day, and um, so he was young. He was young cat. We was on this show. And I remember he, I, it probably, he, he, he was, he got some gig and he bought this BMW. And so, you know, we would drive around the Bronx, go through the car wash and just chill, you know, uh, drink Heineken's in the car. You know, we, that's, you know, that's what we would do. He come, I was like his, his, you know, like a, a older brother or something like that. Then when right. he went out to L, you know, he got that, uh, that show and long story short, man, you know, he caught nine to 13 bullets that wasn't Whoa. intended for him, Ooh. you know, wow. in the wrong place at the right time, apparently, you know, um, in, in, uh, Compton or South, South LA. Uh, and so I, I learned, I learned again, like prote protecting your gift. I learned a, a lesson in, um, New York city. You know, I, I, I would uh, uh, open up a, a, a residual check, maybe be eight, nine thousand dollars. And I wouldn't put it in the bank. I put it, I'd cash it and walk around with it. You know, I'm getting it <laughs> in 30 days. You know? Right? <laughs> oh. You know, um, and and, and that, that's before child support caught up to me. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but, but so um, I'm flossing like that, right? I went to Bloomingdale's. I had bought probably like I know that the, the the jacket 
was seventeen hundred dollars. I probably was I probably was walking around with four grand on me and another four grand in my pocket. And so I, I I'm I'm dropping off a friend in the projects, and predictably, uh, I I get relieved of all the stuff that I went in there with. Oh, <laughs> wow. every, every, every stitch, bro. Every stitch. I, I walk oh. I walk back to the car in my drawers. What? Wow. Yo. I, I, wow. I, I'm glad to tell the, tell the story, you know, one day. But yeah, yeah. But that that took again protecting your gift, right? That that could have easily uh, turned out a, a a different way, you know. Yeah. Uh, and, and and so what I'm saying by protecting your gift is being aware, you know. I'm I, I'm I've been lucky my whole. Well, I don't say lucky. I've just been aware. Like lightning has struck the dude next to me, right? And I'm the word, I'm the guy that cursed. Right? Like, oh, <laughs> right? So, <laughs> but that that's the story of my life. It, it's always happening to the other guy. You know, yeah. if it's bad. Right? But but you know, I can't be in the in the proximity of, of misfortune and, 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 and consider myself lucky, right? A, a, right? a second. So I have to protect my gift by understanding and being aware of the circumstances that led to that. And do I want that to reoccur or not? Now I'm a I'm a really disciplined dude, bro. You know, and and I'm a hard worker. So talent is like seventh or eighth on, on the list of things to be and do. Right. Right. I know a lot of talented, um, way more talented than me. Um and and, and you know, I reluctantly say better looking. You know, there's one or two, you know, there's one or two. <laughs> Black don't crack. You know what I mean? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> you no, know, right. I I agree, and, and and like you said too. I, and just and just reading some of the comments, you know, people are like, "Wow, you know, got it." You know, and and and, that, and that's that's a tone because, like, you know, I heard you say it before, but when you explain that whole scenario, man, and people who are listening, people who who are, you know coming from a different uh way of things they don't realize it like you said you protect your gifts and and like you said you you are smart enough to realize at some point that you know what it's too much stuff that's happening close to me that ain't kosher so maybe i need to change things up and and this is exactly what you did but in, in changing things up and moving forward uh one other question i want to read to you on the board as well is somebody said and, and i didn't know this but uh a beth I think her name is Stoloff, and she says, "How did you get your voice gigs?" And I didn't know you were doing any voice gigs. Is it true or not? Yeah, man. <laughs> uh, <laughs> it, oh, that like I said, acting to me was like um, working fries at McDonald's. Uh, <laughs> there's, there's so many opportunities, and and I, you know, I'm up in here, you know, want to be a franchise owner. You know what I mean? So right. I, I'm, <laughs> How can I get off these greasy fries and and, and, and and put on one of these white shirts and 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 and, and rise through the ranks? And I'm gonna assess that real early, right? Because if it don't make sense for me to do it, then I ain't gonna do it. I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go to Burger King. You know? Yeah. <laughs> you know what well, I mean? Right. 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 <laughs> so where I can be successful. So I I I I I don't I know that I'm I'm real good at a couple key things and other people are better at other things but the things that i'm good at that's what i'm good at that's my that's my that's my you know and i'm <laughs> um I, I i i i'm not to be messed with you know i'm a, i'm 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 an expert at that right right so that's what i i'm i'm embracing now is my expertise i, I was i was uh early on i need to protect my gift now i'm i'm going to amplify my expertise because i know something you know i i do know something and i can i can lean into that and you know i can teach uh people uh something that i know and it has way more to do uh than acting like you know like like i took shakespeare and did a whole bunch of other stuff well if, if you are astute then you you can you understand that this you can extrapolate this to uh, uh this philosophy of, of of life and living you know mm. uh, in 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 
many different disciplines or, or aspects of life, right? And I think that that's what uh, I'm happy to be able to give to um, to my students uh, that I'm fortunate enough to to teach at this level, um, because I think that that you know uh, I'm not I'm not trying to make better actors, you know. Uh, I, I'm encouraging people to be more responsible, accountable citizens, global citizens. Hey, that's there it, you baby. Go. <laughs> there you go. Hey, Gary, man. Yeah. Gotta give I, it don't, up. I, don't, I don't know if Gary had took a, a ton of hits from when we were playing football in high school or something, because this brother just making total sense tonight, man. <laughs> <laughs> um, it, I didn't take no hits. That's the whole thing. <laughs> no. <laughs> hey. And, and this, I was mad at my mama. I was mad at my mama. I came home with a clean uniform. I scored four touchdowns. Four <laughs> touchdowns. I came home with a clean uniform, and and and, and she said something like, "Uh, like, I, I don't know, like, oh, I guess you didn't get in the game." Mama, I was. <laughs> <laughs> I was. <laughs> oh man! Hey, you know, I tell you, you gotta uh, love them, man. You gotta love them. But oh, speaking yeah. of that, I want to want to touch base on everybody. And Gary, I want to uh, yeah. talk about, you know, the the other extended the other extended part of Gary is, is your beautiful wife. Actually, uh -huh. you got a beautiful wife that's out there. And if I don't know if anybody knows that uh, she does a lot of uh, background singing for like. Uh, hold on, uh, hold on. Rolling. That's one of the trivia questions. Oh, yeah. yeah. Oh, okay, okay. All right, all right. Yeah. All right. Oh, that's oh, one of the oh, trivia oh. questions. Wait, wait, wait. Let me, I, I, I'll, I'll, I'll introduce her proper. Uh, okay. If you got a cue, so let me let me answer that question because I was going to say um, my friend Dion Graham is the voice. Of, that's how I got hip to voiceovers and whatnot because this brother was the voice of um uh like um forty eight the the uh, uh what is it first forty eight and those A and E that brother oh, wow. when you hear his voice, but he he did so we did um we did a. Uh, uh, a Cavassier commercial or something like that. And I just seen how smooth he was and boom, boom. So I'm like, damn, man, you know, I, I'm, I'm going to do this. So I remember, <laughs> one, again, I just figured out, right? So one one of my biggest um, uh, paying campaigns was 1-800-COLLECT. Um, uh, and they was looking for a, 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 a Caribbean sounding person. And and I, I went in there and I was like mad because there was all of these, you know, authentic, you know, Speaking right. Caribbean people, right? All right. <laughs> Again, I, I'm, I got a good brain, right? So I, I'm thinking, I know what they want. So, and I, I, I'll do it right now. You, you'll remember. It goes like this: Dial one eight hundred collect and save the people you love. <laughs> Honey, <laughs> oh, wait, wait a minute, that was you. <laughs> <laughs> So, so uh, let me let me tell you about my my uh, my wife. Um, first of all, uh, when I tell you I met her when she was eighteen in Chicago, y'all automatically gonna think R. Kelly. No, no, no. <laughs> no. <laughs> no. Anyway, <laughs> um, she, she's phenomenally talented and and um, many Broadway credits, but. Uh, um, you know, she she sung uh, for uh, she's a harlot, former harlot, singing for Bette Midler. Uh, she's really crafted her her um, niche in as one of the most sought after uh, background uh, vocalists. Um, I would say, you know, in the world, there's probably a a, a handful of them. Um, so she sings uh, full time with Taylor Swift, and has been recently filling in singing with uh the uh european tour for the rolling stones so uh singing with um mick jagger and the other band that she sings with is the uh front band for the rolling stones and uh garth brooks and other stuff like that so she sings some you know rock and roll and um uh, that kind of stuff some country she got some country in there too yeah that's awesome man let's well, give her a round of applause yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. Several years ago, she started. She she uh, 
created this uh, genre of music called Funkabilly. Um, and she's cutting out, uh, on that. But since then, there there have been. Uh, see, she don't she don't have my my my, my good um, uh, business brain because I I would have branded it. I would have, uh, and and we would have been in uh, court suing some Kardashians right now. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, I'm with you, bro. I'm with you. <laughs> yeah, but um, yeah. So I, I'm proud. I'm proud to, uh, um, uh, you know, to be her spouse. We got a good um, life together, um, and probably because we ain't on Vogue or, or, or on TMZ, and, and 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 this is again on another level of protecting. Uh, your gift, you yep. protecting uh, what is important to you. So, you know, a lot of people don't know me because I, I, I try not to be famous. I just want to be good at, 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 at what I do and, and, and knock off whoever is first on that list. That's who I want to knock off, right? So, you know, <laughs> I, <laughs> I like that. I, I like I, that. Be competitive and, and, and win at something, um, but I, I want to be private. And, and, and do that um, on my own terms. So uh, I, I don't I don't uh, care to be famous. I'm funny as hell, and um, I'm accessible, you know, to those who who um, who, who need to find me. Um, and those that are ain't on uh, that ain't welcome. I got a, a ninety pound Rottweiler uh, that. that <laughs> 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 oh, yeah. oh yeah bro oh yeah that's what it's Definitely. all about yeah. hey so, Gary, uh, you know what a lot of people yeah. out here lo I, I, lo I love the feedback we were getting from you and i love like i said this is going out to a lot of different outlets and the fact is i i want i want my hometown you know of uh our high, our high school where we went to our, our i don't want them to realize second our hometown our hometown and our high school our hometown baby and our I, high I want school realize what a gem <laughs> that they have in you and and like i said a guy like you that put out there and a guy like you you should be recognized for the things you've done and i don't want that to go by the wayside you know and i know how you say you like to, you like to keep yourself low-key and private and we love and appreciate you coming on here tonight and sharing you know Definitely. you know your, your thoughts you know you, you shared about things that are going on you know with the wife and you know and some of the struggles you went through or protecting yourself but the thing about it is i want i want everybody who's uh from edison tech you know our high school from 19 whatever 1970s to to currently now to realize that what you're looking at on the screen is this is a guy who's a multi-talented guy this is one of the guys who should be re remissed and should be hanging in the halls of our high school of yes, he you know, should. a guy that had done many great things. And I, I salute you guys who, you know what, looking at this video, recognize that this guy's a talent. Gary, like I said, one thing we want to let everybody know out there as well, how can everybody find different things that's going on with Gary? And one thing I wanted to touch base before all that, tell us a little bit more about your theatrical side. That's the side I want to get to as well, because you got a lot of things going on. And you got the name of your company and everything. I want everybody to know what's going on with you, brother. Well, I have a, um, uh, Dark Blue Mondays is my uh, theater production company. I started it in, in California in, in officially 2012. And basically it began with the idea of, of bringing uh, professional theater uh, into underserved places and using um, underserved uh, people to uh, pr present that product. So I, I would I would work with amateurs and people in the community, and we would put on award-winning um, productions. Wow. Um, you know, you know, I I think what um, in California, uh, in New York in uh, everywhere we, we've been uh, that I, I've, I've produced shows um, under Dark Blue Mondays, we've brought people from the community that don't consider themselves actors uh, and, and have really uh, produced some uh, really, uh, like I said, award-winning um, 
uh, productions. This, these are I didn't give myself the award, you know. Um, they they they've been critically acclaimed, and what's more is that most of these are original works by uh, black and brown um, authors uh, who you know um, through this medium I'm bringing to a greater um, recognition. Um, and that's been a commitment of mine. So when I got to uh, uh, got back to Rochester, I um, formed the show and, and I think I listed some of the shows, five or six shows uh, that I produced uh, that have won awards. And, and I'll say this is this is pretty much a one man operation. You know, Dark with the Money. I don't have a, a, a big staff, but the and and my productions. I think uh, you know no more than ten dollars uh, for admission. So I, I'm not making money uh, on this. This is really just a passion of mine. But you know, to to um, further the point, there there isn't somebody that's paid to do what what I'm doing, and I'll I'll name them at Jiva, at Black Friars, at uh, any of these these places where um, uh, you know somebody has a, a job to do, they haven't produced the kind of shows uh, that I have, and they haven't touched the um, the audiences uh, that I have. And that has been my commitment for uh, 25 years. So, um, and dovetailing to uh, yeah, it, it 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 stings a little bit that there's a, a a hall of a wall of fame in in on the walls of uh, Edison Tech, and that I, I'm I'm not I, I'm not oh, nowhere on it, um, but you know, Google me. How about that? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> hey, I agree. Here, 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 here's 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 how here's how Rochester can make it up to me. Here's how uh, 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 the 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 principal, Mr. Scott, uh, can make it up to me, um, because I have admitted that I cut my teeth at Edison Tech under James C. Carpenter, who you mm -hmm. taught me everything you know, and I know a lot. So if, if, if y'all want to put your money where your mouth is, you could name the auditorium, the Gary DeWitt Marshall, AKA Ghetto Grio Auditorium. And you could do it. <laughs> and if you think I'm serious, then I'm a Bruno Mars you and don't believe me, just watch. <laughs> um, <laughs> that's, that's my boy Gary and, and like I said it, it had to be brought up because uh, there are a lot of people out there and you know a lot of people from Edison Tech and, and different outlets like that you know where we went to high school and Gary Gary accomplished a lot and uh, you know me myself I'm kind of remiss as someone who attended there and that you know I don't see it but hopefully after something like this they got to realize that you know what? Talk to him. Do do what's right. Get this guy in there. Get this guy what he. You know, make 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 a hot, make a ring like you're doing a football stadium. Get this guy in there. Get his name up there where he should be recognized. He's one of the great ones from Edison Tech, from you know from the class of '85. Gary Marshall is a force to be reckoned with, and I and I hope a lot of you guys take heed to that and realize the things that he's done in his career. Gary, like I said, you you lived a you lived a phenomenal life, no matter which way you look at it, brother. You know, you, you went through your ups and downs. But the good thing about you that I love and a lot of people respect is that you seem to have learned from it and advanced yourself from it. And um, one of the things, like you said, and I'm going to dovetail real quickly into your, your academia career. You know, you now being being into the, the academics. I, who who the thought that Gary being the, in the academics, <laughs> this guy <laughs> cracking jokes. <laughs> <laughs> cracking jokes all day you know playing football but he's there and like i said he's doing one heck of a job as you can see some, from some of the hits that we have on the board man it seems like you you're pretty respected out there to where you're at so brother and 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 much kudos to you gary <laughs> look here first of all man keep that on the low man i want these i don't want them to find out you know? <laughs> <laughs> oh boy. Like, Damn, he was acting the whole time. <laughs> <laughs> and they're like a professor. <laughs> yeah. you know, so, oh boy. Here, here's the deal. I, I'm, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna short myself um, from um, 
making the leap from acting to academia because it, it's, it's, it's a large step. And I, I, I worked really hard uh, to get here um, because I have something to contribute, you know. Um, and I'm, I'm, I don't know if he's on here, but, you know, one of the things that, that is, is different now is I had, I had a voice and I had a perspective in the community and, and all of that and, and, and people that heard me was like oh wow that is that's profound or whatever da, 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 da. you know but you know it, it basically fell on deaf ears right, right. i didn't have a, 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 a anywhere to to amplify my voice and the things that i know but now in the country club of academia i have a platform of legitimacy right i'm still saying the same things with the same damn you know urban lisp that i talk with you know, right. but not because of the banner or the crest or whatever. Now, uh, people, I don't know if they respect me more. You know, I hope they don't. Um, but maybe they do. Maybe that maybe they're just that shallow that it took, you know, uh, a faculty appointment for them to uh, actually hear what I've been saying for 25 years. But the only that I've been saying it and succeeding for 25 years that I am here. You know, I didn't I wasn't bestowed anything or given anything. Nobody opened you, you, the door and said, come on in. You know, they read my application and, and, and uh, um, filed it uh, against other applicants. And that's how I, I, I prevailed, you know. So um, I'm here because I earned a spot. And what I do, you know, uh, from here, um, you got to know I'm dead serious because I got George Floyd name on it, right? So I, I, I can't fail because that man gave his life and i can't be frivolous about the opportunity and just sit here and be yeah i'm no, oh, i'm paid now you know what, what, yeah 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 you know that ain't me you know uh, i i i mentioned to you i'm 55 i'm i'm, I'm an, uh, almost an elder you know so i have to be more strategic in how i move but i'm in a in a in a, in a place now where i don't need to be as loud and, 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 and as I, I I did before, and I think my wife gave me the best advice to kind of um, cool me out a little bit. You know, when we got here less than a year ago, you know, she said, you know, you you can you can un unclench your fist now, you can unball your fist now, right? <laughs> you know, like because I was always ready for a fight. That's how I was used to. You know, I I was I you know I, I was just used to fighting. Right. You know, for everything. And here I was in a place that, that invited me here. And I'm looking around, you know, like I said, you know, everybody uh, worried about these masks. I'm here in the South. I'm worried about these hoods. <laughs> <laughs> I hear you. Yeah. I hear you. Right? But, Definitely. you know, that, that wasn't, I haven't been treated that way. I haven't been treated that way at all. I, and and but I'm wise enough not to go looking for it, right? You know, um, I don't walk in the grass barefoot because you know I, I might get stung. I'm gonna be you know, I'm wearing up my, my boots and protect myself, right? Same thing here. And what I'm gonna protect is I'm gonna protect the integrity of what it is that I'm here to do, right? For the time that I'm here, gotcha. and take that very seriously. Gotcha. Um, uh, I got. It. I want to do this last trivia. Oh, yeah, that's right. Because Sorry about that, Gary. We I'm do, go we to do the have last one more one. trivia when we get out. Okay. One more trivia for you guys, man. Uh, this is, uh, if anybody can answer this, um, we'll send you a $5 gift card. Cup of Joe on us. All right? What famous actor or actresses has Gary starred alongside with? Anybody? <laughs> Let's get these. I'm, uh... Yeah, one of you guys was getting a little feedback. I don't know who it is. <laughs> yeah. Can you hear him? We, it looks like we he, have a winner, he, though, Big Tiz. 
We have we a winner! Yes. Oh. Yes. Uh, Lou Esther, you did it again. <laughs> How about man, that? Girl, that girl ain't playing, man. <laughs> How about that? She did it again. She's going to be me? up a long time. Yep. Yeah, we hear you. Yep. Gary's back, ladies and gentlemen. I don't know and, if you can uh, hear us. Gary. Yes. I don't. I'm not sure if he can hear us yet, but can he, oh, he's on his computer now because the yeah. phone died. Yeah. Uh, so big tips. This was a great show, man. Uh, mm -hmm. I, I still see Gary. See him trying to figure out the sound right now. Um, I want to thank everybody really for for joining us and and being a part of this and making it magnificent. Luasta, we're gonna get you ten dollars out there today, okay? <laughs> Oh yeah. All right. Yeah. And uh you got any any final thoughts? Yeah, I would um, love to hear if Gary had some final thoughts. Let's see yeah. if he oh. uh he's back with us. Can you hear us, Gary? Can he, you can't hear us, Gary? Um yeah, I'm not sure if he can hear us at all. He can hear us. Okay. Nothing. Yeah. Okay. He can't. Yeah, so Hey guys, like you said, you know what? One of the things we want to get get across is this guy's a phenomenal talent. You guys that are out here online checking him out, and you know we were almost close to the end of the show anyway. But and we also had somebody who who was gathering up all the coffee cars out there. So you know what? Congrats <laughs> to her. And one yes, thing give like her, I did, give her I did, a hand. right? All right, you lost the Sims. Yep. But one thing I wanted to give credit to is the fact that. You know what? This guy has to be recognized. Gary is a phenomenal talent. He's a guy. He's a multi-talented guy, and a guy is out there. You know, he has a great company that he's running, uh, Dark Blue Mondays. You know, yes. check him out. Gary's doing a lot out there, and you know, you guys from Edison Tech. You know, my alma mater. You, my you got alma a guy mater. that was out there. Yeah, it's you all about alma mater, and the guy so, that was out there, and he's doing great things. You know, and uh, Lou uh, Esther Sim says, I need his biography. <laughs> All right. You know, Gary, so I don't know if you listen to that, brother. They they want to get more info on you. So we'll Are make you? sure Gary has, you know, find ways to get in contact with Gary and find out what he's up to. And again, you know what? We want to thank him for coming on the show tonight, sharing his thoughts on things, sharing some life aspects, sharing things about academics, sharing his whole, whole, whole mindset, his whole thought. So guys, when you see when you see a TV show and you see him out there, you know that guy was here. You know that guy's a great individual, and we need to do it with him again. So hopefully we'll have him on the show again as well. Gary, he offered it up, and we're gonna take him on it. So, you know what? One of one of the great things is uh, I'm not sure if he's on there yet. He's on it, Gary? Can you hear us? Yeah, he's he he's still a he's still <laughs> yeah he still can hear us. Yeah. It's, we hear him yep. though. If you want to say something, yeah, but he can't hear us. He can't hear you us. Hear him? Say anything? Okay. Say something, Gary. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Wow. Okay, but like Big Tiz was saying, um, and he can't hear us now, but he can watch it back. Um, I'm sure he will. But uh, Gary, it's been amazing having you on the show. It's been amazing seeing you again, my brother. I know we go back from from uh, kids. We were, you know, kids, preteens, <laughs> and and just having fun, doing things, coming up together, going to a lot of the schools together, the high school, and um, I don't know if you went to Interim. I, I'm not sure. I get in junior high and high school mixed up a little bit sometimes, but. Uh, I do want to thank you all for joining us tonight. I do want to uh, say that this is the type of talent caliber that we need to build each other up and keep building one another up and keep keep giving people their, their roses while they're alive, their accolades. And Edison Tech, check out this man. He's, he's done some amazing things, you know, with some amazing people. Um, he's worked with the likes of Denzel Washington, uh, Danny DeVito, uh who else Kiefer sutherland he's done some amazing things so big tis with that you want to sign off hey guys till we see you again 
And thanks again, Gary. I know you can't hear us, but we all loving you, brother, and, and respect the craft. So till we see you next time on Songwriters Love. Peace. <laughs> Peace. Here we go.